Welcome back to Prime. I am here with Dr. Gail Thomas and Dr. Joanne Stroud talking about the Dallas Institute and the contribution it has made to our city. Ladies, thank you again for being here. So let's talk about the, the fellows of the Dallas Institute. I mean, you have a list of fellows that are extraordinary. Yes. Um, so tell, us, tell me about those. The fellows um, of the Institute came about after we realized the, <laughs> the, the types of persons we were attracting to uh, seminars and conferences. Our first fellow was Mortimer Adler. And Mortimer uh, was the editor of the Encyclopedia Britannica, if you can imagine. <laughs> no, I can't imagine. <laughs> and Mortimer that. came every year to the University of Dallas, and he was the very first speaker for the McDermott uh, lectureship right. at the University of Dallas. And then Jacques Barson, mm -hmm. uh, just esteemed um, philosopher uh, of culture. And um, those two were the, the first. And then we went on to uh, include Wendell Berry, the well-known poet. Um, in the city, we could take, um, ask fellows from the architectural community. We had Vincent Scully, um, Denise Scott Brown, and Robert Venturi, um, uh, Jane Jacobs, Holly White. Wow. Who am I? Who am I leaving out? No, you're doing, doing very, very well. And then, of course, it's Fred Turner in Dallas, yes. who's I just such a star and internationally. I, I think we have to also say that in recent years that um, Larry Allums has continued the process and added some very, very interesting fellows. So that it's not just, um, it's a, a continually evolving group. Um, Kathleen and, Rain. Yeah, and Kathleen Rain was was in love with India and and Dallas, oddly enough. And she thought that Dallas really had a special place in the world um, and it was bringing something really to light in the world that was important. And, all, and, and Keith, they, Keith so, excuse me, but Keith Critchlow is Prince Charles' architect and helped him found the um, HRH School of Architecture wow. in London. Wow. Keith was a fellow and came in those early years to give seminars. It was Keith who, well, it was James Hillman who introduced us to Kathleen y Rain. Yes, That's originally. Amazing. So all of these, they, they all bring their own unique talents as yes. fellows to the Institute. And people, I don't think people quite realize that. Yvonne but Illich, um, the Catholic philosopher, was extraordinary. He came and stayed a month with us uh, as a fellow, and we were able to loan him out to UT Dallas and the University of Dallas and SMU and Arlington for talks. Wow. Uh, Christian Norberg Schultz, uh, Christopher Alexander, uh, Waming Liu, the urbanist. So, uh, what a list. And then what Larry and Claudia have done, extraordinary work. Oh, if we started on that, we'd take yeah, the rest. Yeah, we would take the rest of We're time. so <laughs> amazed and uh, admire so what they have done in the last 15 years. Um, and then they've included fellows from our Dallas community, including fellows from the Southwestern Medical School, from all of the universities. Willard Spiegelman, from, also from SMU. Right. right. We have a number now. Yeah, because Larry is the executive director now of the of the Dallas Institute, and he took over from you as director. Yes. And uh, and Claudia is the director of the Cowan Louise and Donald Cowan Center for Education. Yes. And what she's doing with the teachers is is carrying on Dr. Cow Doctors Cowan work with the teachers. I mean, it's it's extraordinary what they're doing. It is changing education in DISD, and really deserves to be recognized for the remarkable, profound work that it's doing. Teachers who come say they've, they remember why they went into teaching, you know, and they'll say, it's changed my life. I, and you, extraordinary. And you do, and you hear them say that. Mm -hmm. And for, for teachers to be re-inspired, and that's, I mean, they're the, you know, they're the cornerstone of, of, um, of the next generation, and, and that's amazing to hear that. But you know, it's, it's, it works in reverse to bringing those teachers in, into the institute and having our um, board hear them has really, it lends the teachers, it, uh, 
you know, they begin to feel the support of the community, right. which is really so important. And for all of us to be uh, able to understand, you know, what they're up against, yeah, too. But you can't help but be impressed with the teachers. I mean, they are very Im individually, very impressive. And as I say, a number of our board members have, through this connection, gotten in very, very involved with them. But they deserve to be applauded, you the know, teachers. And, and there's so much um, out there in the, in the media that doesn't applaud them. And it's, t it's, it, this is, it's time. It's time. It is time. So one of the big um, events that are coming up that I know is, is very important for the two of you is the first annual James Hillman Lecture. Uh, he passed away last year. And, uh, and this is a, this is a, it's a big event for you all, isn't it? It is. And so, to, and his his widow Margot McLean uh, is going to be joining with Murma Blakeshe, uh, lasting leaving left an unfinished yes. collaboration with James Hillman. So I think that uh, that Margot and James worked on this together, and it was very important to James the last months of his life because he knew you know the end was coming, and he had, um, he worked through many of his thoughts about life and living and the process of living through death and I haven't seen we haven't seen it but we're looking forward to seeing their thoughts that he, that he was bringing together at the end of his life and apparently and she kept writing to me that you know you'd be surprised they're very joyful um, and so we're we're looking forward to that and then Robert Dr. Robert Sardello one of our other founding fellows will be giving a talk to a tribute um, and Gail and I will be on a panel, um, and so we're we're looking forward to this as a really celebration of of James Hillman's life, which was very important to the world and and to us. We've um, we've been co-publishers of his uniform edition. Mm -hmm. Hold this, up. and this is one of the one of the volumes. And uh, actually, Gail wrote the introduction to City and the Soul. And I wrote the introduction to mythic figures. Wonderful. But this has kept us in very close contact. And how many of these are there so in? There are going to be ultimately 11. I think that there are seven actually now already out. Wow. And there are four more to come. We're still, we're continuing with this, um, this joint effort with Spring to uh, bring these out. And he was, that was one of his great concerns is that he wanted to see this, this project finished. So... We're very happy for having had shared that um, that whole venture with him, and to be able to collect his thoughts. Um, James was one of the most brilliant human beings, um, uh, with this incredible education. He could pull out Plato and Aristotle at the, his fingertips, but he was also a very playful human being, and he was delightful. We he he liked playing baseball. And on his 60th birthday that Gail and I attended, um, he, he, to everyone's surprise, he decided he had learned how to tap dance. Oh, and wonderful. so he and his son both tap danced. And he really, I mean, I don't, I don't think that Fred Astaire has anything to worry about, <laughs> but, but he really did very, very well. So after that, every time we had a special event at the Institute, we'd ask him to bring his tap shoes. And the last time I, uh, the last time I remember his really doing a tap routine was when Gail turned over the, left uh, her position as the director of the Dallas Institute and turned it over to Larry Allums. That's right. I remember James called on the phone. He said, I'm coming and I'm bringing my tap shoes. Oh, <laughs> so that's... he entertained all of us with a great. I would love to just be able to birth into tap. Ex <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that is not a forte of mine. <laughs> so he has, he has had a huge impact on yourselves and, and on the world for, in psychological terms. And he's written a number of books. This, this one here, James Hillman. This, uh, this one is by Thomas More. Oh, this is by Thomas More. Mm -hmm. But oh, about, about writing writing James, Hill. of right. James Hillman. He, James Hillman, I'd have to say, is really the most well-known psychologist now in the world, or one of, certainly one of the most respected. He was heir to Jung, the psychologist <coughs> C.G. Jung. Wow. And he was um, in Zurich 
uh, director of studies at the Jung Institute for years wow. and participated in the Eranos conferences with Jung and then decided after 25 years of being an expatriate, he would return to the United States. And it was at that time that Joanne and I were able, just, I don't quite know how that happened, but we were able to persuade him to come to Dallas. Amazing, amazing. And he's, he, uh, and he, he, well, and his widow is, is very, I mean, she's a very talented artist, isn't she? She is. And, so and they worked together on, uh, they were, like she, she's uh, does you know as paints a lot of different things. They were working together on uh, presentations of her paintings and his discussion about the images in them, especially sort of animal images and things like that. Uh, so they had a very close relationship, and I'm sure that that's going to be evident in this um, presentation. It will. It, that it, she makes. It sounds like it will be very poignant. Now we really would. We are really initiating a series. This is the, just the first. Right. Um, henceforth, I think every October we would like to celebrate his presence in the world and um, really carry forth his thoughts and bring scholars from, you know, not maybe even around the world together to talk about his, his major contribution well, that would in the be, field of psychology. That would be a, a great thing to look forward to. Well, for everything that you have all done at the Institute and what you have all brought to the city uh, is, is astounding. And so from the publications, we haven't even had time to talk about those, but, and, and everything that you're doing for bringing soul into the city and for um, the do Dr. Louise Cowan now is still educating. It's, it's extraordinary. So ladies, thank you so much for being here. And for anybody that um, wants to attend the first annual James Hillman lecture, it will be on October 13th between 6 and 8 p.m. And it will be a wonderful, poignant, memorable evening that really you shouldn't miss. So ladies, thank you. And, uh, and here's to the next 31 years of the Dallas Institute. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Guys, thank you. Join us next time and follow us on, on Prime TV, Facebook, Twitter. Bye-bye.